create a neon rainbow portrait effect in Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to teach you my go-to trick for the perfect neon glow. I'm also going to show you how to make your own photo vibrant and bright. We are aiming for a punk rock pop art vibe for this portrait effect. There's no holding back on color. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Let's get started. As usual, we want to start everything off by creating a solid base to work off of. I am setting the tone with the soft pastel baby blue color. I will also be placing this illustration done by Bad Sin over on Envato Elements titled Odd Creature to set off that punk rock vibe we are really trying to go for with this one. As we want our model to be the main focus, I went ahead and used a gradient map to change its coloring to a much more subtle wash of blues and whites. Now, before we can add neon hair to something, we need to extract and place something with hair. The way you do it doesn't matter. I prefer the pen tool, but as long as the background is gone, you are good to go. For this effect, I much prefer models with short hair. If you're following along with this tutorial specifically, something short, dark, and messy will yield the best results. But with a few changes here and there, this technique will work on any hair length, color, or texture human or animal, so feel free to play. Real quick, I'm also going to add a very slight inner glow layer effect to my subject. I don't typically like using inner glow on subjects as it gives you way less control compared to painting in the glow by hand, but if it's very faint, it can work out quite nicely. And now, here's the reason I love short hair. You can shape it, specifically into large, exaggerated swoosh shapes. You'll want to right click apply layer mask if you have a layer mask, and then go on ahead and go to filter liquify. From here, you'll want to use the forward warp tool, which is usually the default brush liquify will open. Use this brush to push and pull the top of the subject's hair, shaping it into the afro mentioned swoosh or whatever shape you prefer. You can also play with the brush tool options, seeing what feels best. There's really no set numbers for this one. You're really just pushing and pulling that hair into whatever shape you desire. Don't worry about any pixel distortion or stretching for now as we will be covering it up later. Just focus on the overall shape. Once you're happy and click OK, go ahead and add some quick white glow behind the subject. This will help blend our subject into her environment. Now onto the eyes. I want this to be a very stylized portrait. So I want her face features to be moderately enlarged, um, to fairly enlarged. Not anime big, but definitely oversized. My favorite way of enlarging eyes is to copy the subject, shrink down the original subject, and then copy and paste the eyes from the larger copy onto the now smaller original image. This helps keep the eyes and their pixels nice and crisp. When you enlarge a pixel, it tends to blur. So I always try to avoid stretching an image larger than it originally was. Go ahead and line the new eyes and eyebrows up using the old eyes as guides. Uh, just go ahead and lower the opacity while doing this. And then feather out the edges using layer masks. Um, and boom, the perfect enlarged eyes with none of the pixel blurriness. Moving right along, before lighting up the subject's hair, we are going to lighten up her skin, making her nice and bright. We want to make sure the subject, no matter the skin color, is adequately illuminated. So the light from the glowing hair makes sense later on. Um, think about if you had a, a light bulb on top of your head. This will vary from model to model. However, here I used a whole lot of curve layers and a few color layers that I'll do a quick rundown of. First off, a color balance layer to bring some reds into her skin. Next up, a color lookup set to bleach bypass to lighten the skin tone overall. Curves to jack up the lighter points of the face. A brightness contrast to crush the contrast as I like to paint my own contrast back in later. Um, it just gives you a little bit more freedom that way. A second curves to jack up the highlights. I use the blend if here to keep it contained to only the brightest areas of the face 
to bring out the texture in the skin. I really like texture in the skin. I really like almost emphasizing pores. Um, this is obviously completely optional. And then a third curves to remove some of the shadows just from the hair. Go ahead and use layer masks for that. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I like to bring back some contrast myself by painting on a layer set to either soft light or overlay. Overlay in this case. I use a soft round brush set to white and black and set to a very low flow rate. A low flow rate is critical so that you can build up your light and shadows slowly. Be careful not to go overboard. We want to avoid over-processing or, you know, blown out highlights and that kind of real oversaturated, overdone, icky overlay feel. <laughs> I uh, do like focusing more on the center of the face as well as the more expressive lines on the face, such as the eyebrow creases, kind of... Think about when you furl your eyebrow right there. Uh, we still have the color grade to get through. Luckily, it's a teeny tiny little color grade this time around. We're just going to do a, again, a quick rundown. Feel free to pause and replicate. We have a color lookup set to three stripe. This kind of simplifies the colors a little bit. It curves to bring down the greens and the midtones. I use blend if to keep the greens and the highlights, however. I really wanted the greens to remain in the lightest points of the image. A, a second curves to bring up the blues in both the shadows and the highlights. A, a third curves to further bring up the blues and bring it down the greens, the greens right here. Arguably, I cannot say that word, uh, the most important adjustment layer, the selective color layer, um, affecting the reds, yellows, cyans, blues, whites, and neutrals. Usually I put each color on their own adjustment layer, but sometimes I'm lazy or it's just not all that necessary. Um, so in this case, tucking them all into one is perfectly acceptable. You will, however, want to group all these layers together and place it right at the top of all your other layers, locking the group so you don't accidentally click on it. Um, and finally, onto the main event, the neon hair. This all starts with using two adjustment layers to get a neon base. The first, a hue saturation that makes the hair blue. You can adjust this choose you know different colors experiment i just find that blue works best it kind of keeps things from looking too crispy if that makes sense arguably the most important is the color lookup the color negative color lookup layer this file should be set to lighten it was initially included in photoshop cs6 but it was left behind in cc uh, luckily i have both of these adjustment layers packed and ready to download the link will be in the description. Once you have your adjustment layers placed in your file above your subject, you'll want to mask the adjustment layers into the shape of your subject's hair. Control click to get a selection of the whole subject, adding a layer mask to just one of the adjustment layers, and then using a soft brush, mask out the face, chest, and any other you know extra area that isn't hair. Once you are happy with your mask, go ahead and copy it onto the second layer mask. You might be asking, you know, why not uh, group the two layers together and then add a layer mask to the group? It's so you can control each individually if you need to make any fine tweaks, such as bring a little blue into the eyebrows where you might not need uh, neon. It just gives you more options. I'm always for options. But now that our neon base is laid, we're going to start bringing in some detail and even more color by just using the color white. Doesn't make much sense, does it? White does not bring color. In this case, it does. I'll show you the exact colors it brings in. First, create and clip a new layer into the subject under the neon adjustment layers. Using a soft round brush, paint some white on the outer strands of hair or just 
paint some white anywhere for now. You can always erase it later. We just I just want to show you how this how these layers interact with the color white. It's really cool. You'll see the gradient that occurs. White to pale blue to hot pink to orange. Think of orange as your shadows and white as your highlight, of course. And as for painting hair, there's no secret brush or trick for this particular effect, but I do have some general tips as always. To start, while a mixture of soft and hard round brushes work perfectly fine, um, in fact, that's mostly how I did mine, if you have hair strand brushes or a hair strand brush pack, a brush you prefer to use for hair, they will work beautifully too. You'll want to make sure your hair strands are tapered and smoothly transitions. If you don't have a graphics tablet, which I do and I admit it helps very much in these kinds of situations, you can use the smudge tool to drag out your lines, giving them a tapered effect. Most of your hair strands can be painted on normal layers with a hard round brush, while your transitional shading is best done on a soft light layer with a soft round brush. I personally like to work from the outside in. I uh, paint the flyaways and any of the outer hairs a solid white and blend inwards so they kind of become the brightest parts and then I connect them to the inner parts of the hair. You can actually use black to increase the brightness of the orange areas. I like setting the layer to overlay when painting with black uh, for this particular effect. Create 100 million layers. Minimal. I'm not even being sarcastic at all. This is my completely serious voice. Don't be afraid of layers. Create as many as you need. And finally, go ahead and look up some hair painting tutorials. Um, just remember, we are only painting with different opacities of white in this particular effect. You could experiment with other colors, but personally, I've, I find white works best. And then while doing your hair, don't forget about the eyebrows. They are optional, but I think they really set off the neon hair vibe. And your eyebrows will use the, the same techniques as your hair. Uh, just make sure and mask them in so you get that neon base. And then go ahead, play around with painting white above the neon base and below the neon base. But you can also try adding some hair above, um, some finer strands. Hair is hair. What works for the head will work for the brows. And then finally, we're going to bring everything together and add some proper glow to our neon hair by combining a handful of different layer modes together. The trick here is to color pick the color from the area you are painting over. So if you want to enhance the orange areas, use the eyedropper tool to color pick the orange color and paint over the orange. Same with the blue and pink. If you want a more, you know, quote unquote accurate color picker, you can turn off your color grade layers. I don't think it's very necessary. You just in general need a very bright, vivid orange, a very bright, vivid pink, bright, vivid blue. So first, an overlay layer to intensify the glow coming from the pink areas. We want this to be fairly subtle, just bringing a little bit of pink into the blue areas, you know, to help with that transition a little bit. Next, create three new layers set to screen named orange, pink, and blue. Now, with a soft round brush set to a very low flow rate, you are going to want to layer blue on blue areas, as I said before, pink on pink areas, orange on the orange areas. Keep the colors on their own separate layers. Again, this is a control thing. Um, it gives you just all around more uh, control of everything. And that is always a good thing. And you can go and finish everything up by adding some final brightness to the very inner orange spots of hair and by adding some blue glow all around your model, particularly on the left side of her face in uh, my case. These layers can be set to soft light, overlay, screen, maybe even color dodge. And th there you have it. When you really break this effect down, 
the two layers doing most of the work is that blue hue saturation layer and the color negative color lookup layer. From there, it's just a matter of manipulating the lighting and shadows underneath, which means this effect is full of possibilities. All the other steps in this tutorial were specific to this image. You can use this to even create things like fire effects, you know, maybe even lightning effects. I stumbled upon this technique years ago entirely by accident. I was just randomly creating layers, messing with layer modes, putzing around. So believe me when I say experimenting and just playing with Photoshop always pays off in the end. I'm not just blowing smoke when I say it. So as always, I'm Abby Esparza, keep experimenting, and if you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other wonderful tutorials that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. See you next time.